Hello again and welcome to training part three for the Tavern Girl Restaurant and Bar. Uh, by now you've taken the first two videos and you've taken the first two quizzes so you kind of get the rhythm. Part three is going to be identical uh, and you'll finish quiz three upon completion of this video then work into your last one part uh, four and uh, optional but you can uh, also view the video on the point of sale. Um, that just gives you a rundown as to how we set up our Aloha system and how it works. You'll be required to do all the ringing on the point of sale in your follow shifts once you complete training and take your final uh, for practice, but sometimes it's good to get a little bit ahead of the game and watch the short video uh, relating to the point of sale. It's very helpful. Additionally, you'll find uh, uh, other files that you already have paper copies of, so there's no need or requirement to spend any time with them. But in the event you would prefer to have a digital file versus the paper file that you were given during your orientation, we do have our drink menus, our specialty cocktails, beer lists, and such for each store uh, on this uh, uh, class marker site um, uh, or the class marker site. In addition, we have the floor plans there for you to study table numbers. But again, you should have received a paper copy of both of those uh, when you attended orientation. With that said, we'll get right into part three. Part three, we're going to start with kids. Kids, we are very uh, approachable for families, um, 8 to 80 demographics. So kids are a big part of what we do, uh, roughly 500 kids per week per store. So families uh, know that this is a place that they can bring their kids um, that is welcoming to kids. We, of course, have kids uh, entrees, which we'll go through in a second, uh, as well as kids beverages. And uh, for the younger children, we also have... Um, placemats and coloring things that they can use they'll be delivered to the table with them from the host stand but we want to do our very best to uh, take care of kids because if the kids are occupied and happy parents are occupied and happy and parents like to bring their kids to places that uh, take care of them and pay attention to them and at the end of the day they're customers so we want to make sure that we we uh, uh, meet their needs as well all of our kids' meals are served with a complimentary uh, juice, fountain beverage, or a milk, either regular or chocolate of their choice, is served in a kid's cup. Uh, kids' menu is intended for those that are 12 years of age or under. Can you get a uh, kid's meal as an adult? Yes, upon exception. Just talk to a manager about it and find out what the reasoning is. Sometimes there's special dietary needs where they can only eat so much. And, of course, we will do that. We do, for a few of our kids' items, also have adult sizes. Like, for example, chicken fingers is only on our kids' menu. We can double up the portion and make an adult version as well. Uh, it's just a different price. But the kids' menu itself is for 12 and under. Coloring sheet is available to host and again, they're going to be delivered with the regular menus. Um, make sure the plates uh, aren't too hot with leaving the kitchen, uh, particularly with kids, but with anybody at the table. If you're carrying a hot plate or something that's baked and double lined uh, on another plate, just make sure that you let the guests know that, hey, the top plate's very warm. Be careful with that. And always, always park hot food away from kids, especially younger kids, or at least make mention to the adults at the table that there is a hot plate uh, so that they can move it to the appropriate place because we don't want kids getting uh, injured uh, by touching a hot plate. We'll start with the we'll start with the kids' chicken strips. Uh, this is served in a uh, small uh, oval, a nine-inch oval. It gets ram and ketchup because kids like ketchup with everything. Uh, they get three chicken strips, uh, and they're made to order, cooked to order, and then their choice of side. This one just happens to be shown with potato chips, but they get fruit and. Uh, Kids' fruit is a wedged apple. We peel them to order and wedge them to order. Uh, if they can get a skewer as well, that would just be a different button that you would hit uh, when modifying this. But a fruit for a kid in and of itself is just a wedged apple. And, of course, they can get fries, both shoestring and waffle fries. And any other side that's available to adults, there might be a small upcharge. The only expo set on this one is the ramekin of ketchup, kids' chicken strips. Ranch is a popular one as well, but you'll be able to choose the sauces and the point of sale when you actually put the order in, and you'll see that later. Next kid's item is a kid's pepperoni. So instead of the 12-inch uh, pizza, this one is uh, smaller. It's a 10-inch pizza, but it's pretty good size for a kid. Just marinara sauce, mozzarella with pepperoni. No green stuff because typically kids don't like green. This is also available in just cheese, and it's available with sausage, or you can do a combination of whatever. In fact, you can ring up a kid's pepperoni pizza and any of the toppings that are available on our adult pizzas, you can add to a kid's pizza as well. Uh, there just might be an additional charge for it. But kid's pepperoni pizza, kid's sausage pizza, kid's cheese pizza are printed on the menu. 
Next one, kids' cheeseburgers. It's two mini burgers. It's two two-ounce burgers. And this is served with American cheese on a grilled slider bun with their choice of side. Again, nine-inch oval, their choice of side. This picture happens to be house-made potato chips. But again, they can get waffle fries, shoestring fries, uh, an apple, um, and any of the other sides that are available for adults. Cheeseburgers, just the beef, cheese, and the bun. They can, of course, you can upsell bacon. You can modify this. No cheese, however you choose. Next one's Kids Quesadilla. Kids Quesadilla uh, is a smaller flour tortilla. Uh, this is two six-inch flour tortillas. And this is Monterey Jack cheese and put on the grill uh, and then cut into uh, triangles or the wedges. And this one uh, is pictured with a side of fruit. Again, a kid's fruit is the wedged fresh apple. It's a Granny Smith apple. Kids Quesadilla. Kids Mac and Cheese. Looks just like this. This is a Velveeta-based cream cheese uh, that we mix with our cheese and cream. Uh, served with a cavatappi noodle. Just a swirl noodle. Kind of fun for kids. We just salt this on the expo line before it goes out. Again, letting the parents and the kid know that this will be hot when it arrives at the table. Kids Grilled Cheese is sliced white bread. This is just traditional white bread with American cheese. Served with their choice of side. And again, this picture is shown with an apple. Kids grilled cheese. So that's the thing on kids. That's the entire menu. We do get a lot of kids that come in and order right off the adult menu, which of course is fine. Again, we just ask that they be 12 or under if they're going to order off of the kids menu. Any other exception to that, just communicate with the manager. We very much have a can-do attitude, so I'm sure that we'll be able to uh, give the guests what they need and, and work something out. Um, the beverages, you'll see the cup when you arrive and your follows. It's a plastic cup that is lidded for kids that are of younger age. Uh, but when they approach that 11, 12, 13, the kids' beverage still comes with it, but perhaps it's a regular size uh, a glass uh, for, say, a fountain beverage. Uh, just because when you get to 12, maybe you're right on that border and you don't want to drink out of a little sippy cup anymore. Uh, but that's kind of your call based on uh, the kid themselves. If they're younger, typically 10 and under, uh, it's a kid's cup um, just to avoid spills at the table and such. We do not reuse and or wash kids' cups uh, for the next guest. Uh, they go either in the trash or they leave with the guest. Next section is pastas. Pasta is very popular in fall and winter, but we do sell quite a bit of them all year long. Very large portions. Um, all of our pastas are made to order in the saute pan when you ring it in. You do need to know the ingredients, not the, uh, you know, not the exact portion uh, or, or how much of each season or stuff, but you need to know what goes in it. You can sub sauce on any pasta, just like with our sandwiches and our burgers. You can sub breads and, and such at no charge. Sub sauce is not a charge either. So if there's one of these pastas and they want a blend of sauces or they want to substitute a different sauce altogether, you just hit the sub sauce button and it'll give you all of our sauce options. Uh, again, any question that comes up, rather than punting at the table, just excuse yourself and find out the right answer because chances are you'll be confronted with that question again. You can also sub noodle on any of our pastas. So if somebody's ordering a baked spaghetti, but they want a fettuccine noodle, we can certainly do that. All of our sauces are made in house. So uh, our marinara, our pizza sauce, our Alfredo, uh, our white wine garlic, um, the Velveeta cheese, everything is made in house uh, by our hots guy, we call them in the prep room in the morning. And of course with our pastas, you could add on a super salad uh, for the 350 uh, as a starter item. Secondary service for pastas is pretty obvious. Grated Parmesan, red pepper flakes is something if you're delivering that uh, and you're completing the table, that's something that you would ask the guests that they'd like. And there are pepper mills in the restaurant and then also Parmesan shakers uh, throughout the restaurant that you can bring to the table as well. But please, if you're asked for those secondary service after you solicit them, make sure that you get those secondary service items to the table. It'll be your responsibility. First pasta, baked ravioli with chicken. Lots of food, very heavy. You'll see how this one's double lined. It's a 13-inch oval on top of a 15-inch oval with a liner napkin in between them. Reason being is this item is put into a salamander or an oven that bakes from the top down, and that top plate gets very hot, so we don't want to carry it with just that plate. We're going to carry it with a 15-inch underneath it. This, of course, is one of those items that you're going to want to make sure that you make the guest aware of that it is hot. Because this isn't a long noodle, it's a ravioli, there is no pasta spoon or Windsor spoon that's put on this plate. The only thing the expo does is salt it. 
So it's a roasted chicken breast, a sautéed in olive oil, roasted garlic, and uh, it's blended with marinara and garlic parmesan sauce, tossed with a uh, cheese stuffed ravioli, and they're larger ravioli, and you get eight of them. Uh, topped with mozzarella cheese, and then it's baked in the salamander, and then it's garnished with a little bit of more fresh Parmesan and parsley. Baked chicken ravioli, very filling, flavorful, uh, very popular. Kind of a, a crowd pleaser pasta, as is the next one that we're going to talk about. The next one, well, I lied. It'll be the one after this. Monterey shrimp. This too, crowd pleaser. This is our healthiest of all pastas. This is sweet shrimp uh Sautéed in olive oil with a little bit of roasted garlic, asparagus, roasted red peppers, spinach. And then this one has a white wine sauce with fresh lemon and butter um, and a little bit of Parmesan. Uh, so it's a light sauce. It's a white wine sauce. Uh, and then it's tossed with a vermicelli uh, pasta. And you can see all the color in it. This one, too, is a long noodle. So it would get a pasta spoon that you see in the image. Any long noodle is going to get a pasta spoon. Uh, and then this one's salted, as are all of our pastas. They're lightly dusted across the entire top of the pasta with salt from the expo line before it goes out. Not a ton, uh, but not too shy either. It's just salted across the top of it. Um, so the setup for us is salt and a Windsor spoon on the expo side. Monterey shrimp. If somebody's looking for something, they want a pasta, but they don't want anything real heavy, this is for them. It's a crowd pleaser as well. It's been around for uh, eight, nine years on our menu uh, and can continues to be a good pasta seller. Monterey shrimp. Cajun chicken fettuccine Alfredo. So as you can imagine, fettuccine noodles tossed in our house-made Alfredo sauce. And then it's garnished with Parmesan cheese and chopped parsley. And this is topped with a, a charbroiled Cajun chicken breast. So we take a chicken breast, we dust it in Cajun seasoning, we charbroil it to order, and then we julienne cut it and lay it over the top of the pasta. Uh, before it goes out. Cajun chicken fettuccine Alfredo. Something missing from this, as the slide says, it's a long noodle. It should get a Windsor spoon. Now, when we put a Windsor spoon on a pasta, we don't dig the mouth of the Windsor spoon into the pasta. We lay it on the side of the plate so you can actually see uh, the mouthpiece of the, the Windsor spoon on the top of the plate. But that's what's missing, just to drill that point home. Chicken fettuccine Alfredo, just like the Cajun chicken fettuccine Alfredo. The only difference is this one's just charbroiled. It doesn't have any Cajun seasoning on it. So it's just the fettuccine noodles, the house-made Alfredo, a grilled chicken, julienne cut, and then it's finished with shaved Parmesan and a little bit of parsley for color over the top. Chicken fettuccine Alfredo. Great upsells to these two pastas, the Cajun and this one, are things like sautéed mushrooms, broccoli. Um... Just driving your PPA and enhancing the meal for the guest, it's a great suggestive item because a lot of people that would eat this uh, would also like it with broccoli and or sautéed mushrooms. And, of course, you could do asparagus. You can put just about anything you want in there. Um, given a build-your-own-kitchen and such, it's very much a can-do. But those are the two most popular upsells. Next one this is our secondary house uh, pleaser. This has been on our menu for nine years. This is much like the baked ravioli, only it's got a slightly different flavor profile. This is our baked spaghetti. This is Italian sausage, pepperoni, and it's sautéed in olive oil, and it's tossed with spaghetti, a spaghetti noodle, a blend of marinara, and our Alfredo sauce. So it's not just red sauce. It's our red sauce and our Alfredo. Topped with mozzarella, and then it's baked in the salamander. And then it's garnished with fresh Parmesan and parsley. And, of course, that's a long noodle, being a spaghetti noodle. So the Windsor spoon would lay in that top plate, uh, not dig the mouthpiece in, but lay in that top plate as pictured. This one, too, because it's baked, is double lined on a 15-inch oval with a liner napkin in between the two. Just make sure that you let people know that this is hot. Uh, these are large pastas. They're large portions. The pictures really don't do them justice. But, um, you know, some of these are pound, pound and a half. So nobody's going to leave hungry uh, because the portions in the entire menu, and specifically here with the pastas, um, there's great value in them. Uh, there's there's quite a bit of product there. In fact, uh, a lot of people can't finish this. They bring the rest home for a midnight snack or lunch the next day. And so that prior one gets a spoon and salt, as all pastas do. Our last pasta, three cheese shells and meatball. This is three cheese stuffed uh, shells that uh, are cooked to order. They're large shells, and then they're placed in a large... Well, it's 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 technically our salad bowl, but it's utilized for many things. It's a 62-ounce bowl um, with marinara sauce, 
uh, and a large meatball. That large meatball is 12 ounces, so it's a three-quarter pound meatball that then is then cut into six wedges. So it kind of falls like a like a meatball onion, and then it's topped with shaved parmesan and a little bit of parsley uh, for color ton of food this is a definitely a big one a, a kind of a guy's pasta for somebody that's really hungry um uh great meatball just a good product but it's a lot of food and expo said is a little bit of salt so that's pastas next section is entrees we'll start with temperatures just so we're all on the same page uh these again don't differ than anybody else's temperature this is very standard in the industry but just to make sure that you don't come from somewhere that perhaps defines temperatures a little bit different uh than the industry it's worthwhile to go through a rare is a cool red center medium rare is a warm red center and medium is a warm pink center medium well is cooked through with a touch of hot pink and cooked through being well done is no pink at all we do take temperatures in all of our steaks burgers etc First entree is fish and chips. Fish and chips is um, codfish. You get four large sticks. I see an error there on the copy, but we'll get that corrected. It's four large fish fillets uh, that are breaded to order uh, and lightly fried, crispy, served in a basket. It's actually a burger basket with waffle fries, a cup of coleslaw. The ketchup goes on the side of the fish, and then the tartar sauce goes on the side with the coleslaw it's a house-made tartar sauce lots of food and then they'll get a lemon wedge from the uh, kitchen as well now this one has um, um, the expo set of being the ketchup and the tartar and the coleslaw um, fish and chips very popular in fact on Mondays one of our specials is an all-you-can-eat for a reduced price and I want to say it's $14 uh, but they pay $14 and they can reorder as much fish and fries as they want uh, and it's pretty popular on Monday nights. Fish and chips on the entrees. Next item is the chicken skewers. Chicken skewers are skewers with onion, red pepper, green pepper, and chunk chicken breast. Uh, we take chicken breast, fresh chicken breast, and we cut them up into larger chunks uh, and skewer them with the red onion, green pepper, red pepper, charbroil, and we serve them over a bed of rice. And it's a cilantro rice, so it has a little bit of cilantro in it and a little bit of uh, butter, topped with house-made Alfredo sauce, uh, and then diced red and green peppers for color are sprinkled over the top. Very popular item, um, very filling, um, kind of hit all the flavor profiles, but a good chicken entree option for somebody that perhaps doesn't want uh, pasta or red meat. Next one is the grilled shrimp and scallop skewer. So it's about the same size. The difference is, is they're going to get jumbo shrimp and scallops. And then in, in red pepper and green pepper, there's no onion on this one. Uh, so they get sea scallops uh, and the jumbo shrimp and the bell peppers skewered. And that too is charbroiled. And it's set on a bed of the cilantro rice. And then this is finished not with Alfredo, but this is finished with a house-made shrimp sauce. Kind of an Osaka shrimp sauce. Um, and then again, diced red and green pepper uh, for a garnish over the top large plate of food great option for the seafood and that sauce very addicting i put that on anything uh taver grilled meatloaf meatloaf is served on a 12 inch round plate you get sauteed vegetable medley uh you get the garlic mashed potatoes and you get the house made meatloaf the meatloaf is actually charbroiled to order and then it's brushed with barbecue sauce um, our meatloaf is of ground angus chuck and it does have uh, bacon in bacon bits in our meatloaf. So it adds a different flavor profile. And then it's served again with the mashed potatoes of the veg medley. Expo set would be a ramekin of butter um, on this product. This product's also served with a steak knife. It's not shown that way. Sometimes we do that throughout the video just to make a point of it, much like the pasta spoon for long noodles. This one is served with a steak knife. It's just tucked in underneath the protein. Uh, not the mashed potatoes or the veggies, but underneath the protein so it doesn't fall off the table when delivering. The grilled meatloaf. Pan-seared teriyaki salmon, one of my favorites. This is a Norwegian salmon. It's pan-seared. and It's finished with a, uh, a ginger orange teriyaki sauce. This is served over a bed of jasmine rice. And it's topped with a pineapple citrus salsa. So you've got the flavors of the uh, the ginger sauce, the teriyaki, ginger teriyaki, um, the salmon, and the citrus salsa. 
with the rice kind of being the starch binder. Very popular item. Great seafood option. Very filling. And this is an 8-ounce fillet, so it's not a small piece of salmon. It's, uh, it's fairly large. Next one is the spicy ginger seared tuna. This is a well-caught yellowfin tuna. Uh, and this is pan seared after it's coated with sesame seeds and it's pan seared rare as tuna should be if they want it done more than rare then of course we'll certainly do that for them but it does stay on the menu and by default it's served a seared rare this one is in julian cut and it's fanned out over the same bed of jasmine rice as the uh, salmon is and, but this one is accompanied with a spicy sesame ginger sauce uh, and a an asian slaw over the top uh, as the uh, garnish great product good seafood item uh, for people and very popular uh, no expo set on this one either spicy ginger seared tuna Cajun shrimp basket it's a burger basket uh, it is shrimp that we uh, bread and uh, lightly uh, fry uh, crispy to order and then it's when it comes out it's dusted in a Cajun spice a few tablespoons of Cajun spice. It's not extremely hot, but it definitely, you know, has a spice and it's a little, little bit of kick to it. Served with a cup of coleslaw. This one's automatically served with shoestring fries versus our waffle fries. Uh, a wedge of lemon, which will come from the kitchen. And then on the side of the shrimp will be the cocktail sauce. On the side of the fries will be the ramekin and ketchup. Ramekin and ketchup, cocktail sauce, and the coleslaw are all the responsibility of the expo as an expo set. Cajun shrimp basket. Next one is the hanger steak. Great steak item. This was served in a large bowl as well, 62 ounce. This is a uh, Angus beef hanger steak. It's char broiled to order, so we take a temperature on this. Then we cut this uh, into uh, uh, little little coins or, or, or beef uh, uh, strips. And then it's uh, accompanied with a blue Parmesan shoestring garlic fries. I know that's a mouthful. But it's our shoestring fries that we toss with uh, blue cheese crumbles, uh, a little bit of Parmesan, and uh, some fresh garlic butter. And so it really takes on an infused seasoning flavor in, in the fries. The green stuff you see in front is just a chimichurri sauce, a green chimichurri sauce, which is awesome. Great plate of food, hanger steak. Somebody's interested in a steak, and the filet is good as well, but maybe you want to talk them into this because it's different. People that like steak love this. The hanger steak. Speaking of the filet, we have a naked filet in our menu. This is an eight ounce, uh, and we we hand trim our, our meats at the restaurant. Um, seasoned gro uh, and char broiled, and again we take a temperature on this, so we're going to char broil it to temperature. Served with uh, maple bacon Brussels sprouts, and again the blue Parmesan shoestring garlic fries that we saw in the hanger steak. Um, accompanied with a ramekin of béarnaise sauce. Now, this one has a tried Oscar style for $4, which is the crab and the uh, béarnaise on the top. Um, this one is actually pictured Oscar style. Uh, for $4 for, for an Oscar style, fresh, it's, it's, it's a great deal. Uh, so it should be an automatic upsell uh, that you suggest anytime somebody orders the naked filet. And the steak will also get a knife, steak knife tucked in underneath uh, the steak wasn't on the picture that we just viewed, uh, but again, sometimes we go through that just to kind of plant it in your memory. Next section, desserts. We have large portions, so sometimes you're going to want to plant the idea of a dessert into their head at some point during the visit before they finish, of course. Save room for, you know, whether it be cheesecake or what have you. Uh, always be specific when selling a dessert. Don't go to a table and just ask if they've saved room for dessert because there's nothing enticing about that. If you use something by name or name or something descriptive, uh, the chances of you selling it are just that much greater. And that's true in our industry and in every industry. Uh, but don't say things like drink or appetizer or dessert because, albeit they understand what you're saying, there's nothing suggestive about it. You'll find that your sales will be greatly enhanced the more specific you can be with your items. And in fact, it's kind of a requirement. So uh, we listen on the floor. We want to make sure that people are being suggestive by name. We're not in the business to gouge anybody. We're in the business to make money, to be sure. And But there are times with enhanced upselling and being suggestive, 
you know, you come in, you have an appetizer, or you start a cup of super salad, your entree is fabulous, and you, you were suggested a great dessert. It's a more fulfilling visit uh, for everybody, and it's enhanced, and the likelihood of them coming back in the very near future is just that much greater. Um, now, everybody's money conscious, but one of the things you're not going to have to worry about here is the portions that they get for, for what they pay. The value proposition is very high in the restaurant. We, we don't get anybody that says, geez, I can't believe you charged me for that much for that. Uh, they, they definitely get what they pay for. And it's a made-to-order, made-from-scratch kitchen. So none of this stuff comes, you know, cut a bag open and was frozen, and we, all we do is throw it in the microwave and then throw it in the pasta bowl. We're making this stuff uh, here, the sauces and made-to-order in the saute pan. Um, so... The, the value proposition is very high and guests are, are, are very happy with it. But it's tough to sell desserts when you have large portions because by the time people are done, they're full. So you do have to plant the seed early at the table and be specific by name because you'll enhance your sales of desserts. When you're running a dessert to a table, go low and slow, meaning, you know, make sure that other table see it because a lot of times they'll see things that are just, they have that wow factor. Like this cheesecake stands very tall or chocolate cake or red velvet and so on. Other tables will see it and say, what was that? And, of course, that's one of the best sales techniques in the world because people see it come by and they immediately want one. I know what happens to me when I go out a lot and I see a, a, a very appealing or appetizing uh, dessert. I'm going to ask because chances are I'm going to buy that. Anyway, our New York-style cheesecake um, served with fresh sliced strawberries and some house-made whipped cream on a 10-inch round plate. And then when you ring this, like the other desserts, uh, it's going to ask you how many forks you want, and they're sold as it's sold out of the expo line. Forks and spoons, that is. Um, so uh, anything with ice cream is going to get a spoon, and anything without ice cream is going to get a fork. New York style cheesecake. Next one is the key lime pie. Key lime pie. It's the house made key lime pie as well, and finished with um, the fresh whipped cream. And what we do is we. Uh, shave a little fresh lime zest on it as well, and then we sugar line a lime wheel and put that in the top of the uh, whipped cream. Key lime pie, popular all year round. This one is our tavern brownie, served in a 14-inch rectangle plate. Uh, this is a house-made chocolate brownie, uh, uh, fresh whipped cream, uh, dark rum, uh, macerated seasonal berries just means that the seasonal berries, blueberries, strawberries, such, they're actually marinated in a, a dark rum uh, and, and sugar marinade. Uh, so it does take on a little bit of alcoholic flavor. Um, you do not have to card for this. It's not illegal to serve it because it's not that content of liquor in it, but it is marinated berries. And then it's drizzled with fresh caramel uh, over the top and then uh, vanilla bean ice cream is in between the two. So it's a large square brownie. They cut in half. They kind of lean it into a portion of vanilla bean ice cream. They top it with fresh whipped cream and the macerated berries and then drizzle a little bit of caramel. Uh, and this one's served with a spoon, the tavern brownie. All of these desserts, by the way, are shareable. You're going to get people that order them just for themselves. Uh, but it's a great way to sell it to somebody because if they're, oh, I'm too full, but there's somebody that might want one, I'll tell you what, I can bring four forks. You guys can share the brownie. It's plenty for everybody. And sometimes that alone will make a sale um, because there's plenty uh, to go around at the table. Chocolate cake, house-made chocolate cake served with vanilla bean ice cream uh, and some house-made whipped cream and some house-made caramel sauce. Now, the caramel sauce on this one is served in a little decanter off to the side, kind of like a little creamer dish. It is warm, uh, and then the chocolate cake is laid on its side, and you'll see the white on the top of the chocolate cake there. That's just a little bit of sea salt. Uh, and the idea is when it's delivered to the table, they drizzle that warm caramel over the chocolate cake, served with a fork on this one chocolate cake next one red velvet cake this is house made uh layered red velvet cake with a chocolate grenache a ganache uh and a cream cheese frosting served with vanilla bean ice cream again uh very shareable it's a huge piece of cake definitely will uh, catch some attention as you're walking through the restaurant red velvet cake served on a 14 inch rectangle so that's the desserts. 
Now, one day of the week um, on Sundays, we open up one hour early, so we're open at 10 a.m., and we serve brunch 10 till 2. Uh, brunch is served buffet style, uh, and there's quite a few items on there. Uh, most of it's self-service. There are a few things that come out of the kitchen for those that are ordering brunch. Um, it's very popular for us uh, because it's a strong value for people. And it's immediate because you come in for brunch. You can literally get your beverage be up in, uh, on the buffet line in, in, in moments. So it's served 10 to 2 every single Sunday. A little bit longer sometimes on special holidays like Easter, Mother's Day, Father's Day where we would go 9 to 3 versus 10 to 2. Uh, there is an adult price, and then there's a children's price. Um, ages 4 or under are complimentary, but, you know, sometimes you got to ask the age because sometimes uh, kids can eat a lot. Um, prices may vary uh, by store and, of course, by event. Because uh, for Mother's Day, Easter's, and other special events, we do beef it up. We include a dessert uh, portion of the buffet, add a few more shafers, for example, adding a few items. Um, but the base of our Sunday brunch is available every single Sunday. On Sundays, in addition to running the brunch 10 till 2, we do also serve the full menu, but it doesn't start until 11. So the full menu in our restaurant seven days a week starts at 11 o'clock, including on Sundays, even though we're open an hour earlier. So for the first hour, it's just the buffet line. But Sunday has such great value and there's such great items on there. It, it, you're not going to sell very many menu items because this is such a great deal. And it has everything uh, from pastas to proteins to carved beef to uh, you know eggs to salad, everything that you would want. Um but the menu is available in the event somebody wanted something. Beverages are not included in our brunch price. So coffee, uh, teas, fountain beverages, everything uh, is extra. We do on Sundays run a special on mimosas and Bloody Marys. The House Bloody Mary, not the Build Your Own, but the House Bloody Mary. Uh, they're only $3.50. So it's a really good deal uh, for mimosas and bloodies. And that too runs between 10 and 2 uh, every Sunday along with a brunch buffet. This is just an image of kind of the plates, the 10 inch plates that are available, um, orange juice, cider fruit, and some breakfast stuff. Um, so I'll quickly go through it, but on your first Sunday brunch, you'll get a chance to try everything and kind of view the line. Uh, but there's always fresh assorted fruit. Uh, there's always three types of scones um, uh, on that day, fresh croissants, um, there's Reggiano hash browns, which are cheesy hash brown, very addicting, very popular. Uh, there's always going to be two different kinds of eggs, the scrambled eggs that are regular, and then there's be a chef special scrambled eggs, which could be Denver ham and cheese, whatever it might be for that week. But you'll be informed in pre-shift as to what the special is. There's always biscuits and sausage gravy, which is a spicier sausage gravy and fresh biscuits. There'll always be a chef's entree special. It could be a pasta special or an entree special, but every week it'll be a fresh entree special. Uh, there's always mashed potatoes and gravy. Uh, there's always uh, sausage links, uh, thick cut smoked bacon, carved beef uh, to order. There's a, actually a carving station on the buffet line. And with the carving station on the buffet line, there's also a... Uh, made to order pancakes. There's a pancake station as part of the buffet. It's a manned station, so somebody's making pancakes. But we make blueberry, uh, uh, chocolate chip, and just regular buttermilk. And then, of course, an assortment of toppings fresh pineapple, uh, tidbits, uh, whipped cream, chocolate chips, syrups, and such. Uh, now, in addition to the, everything on the buffet line, for those that are ordering brunch, we also offer included in the brunch price uh, caramel uh, caramel rolls, sticky buns that come out of the kitchen and they're actually run just like food because um, you have to type in how many um, need to go out to the table. Uh, but by default, if you hit a caramel roll, it comes out with three uh, uh, caramel rolls on a plate. And of course, if you have more than three, you could just do multiples of uh, the plate of three. Or if you have four, you can modify it four and so on. Um, that comes out of there. Additionally, we have tablets at the table on Sundays only uh, for those that are ordering brunch where they could uh, 
they can uh, build their own omelet. Uh, there's there's select options on an omelet uh, that they can fill out the tab just like they would for pizzas, burgers, and salads. Build your own, um, and it comes with the brunch buffet. The important thing about that is when you greet the table because it happens so fast, greet the table, explain the brunch, sell the brunch, get their beverage order, and before you leave to bring their beverage order, let them know if they're enjoying the buffet. Let them know that they can fill out that build your own uh, omelet page uh, while you're getting their beverages so that when you return with their beverages, you can immediately grab that from the guest and then ring that in. It takes about six, seven minutes to, to make an omelet. Uh, and get it out to the table. We just want it to be out with the table when they're eating their 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 meal versus you know it being a dessert and showing up at the end. So we've got to be a part of that. It's not just the kitchen and their six minute cook time. It's us making sure that we communicate it to the guests so that it gets filled out right away, and then we grab that and get that rung in right away. Like everything else in the menu, the uh, we need to ring it in as soon as we take the order. Now the buffet doesn't come from the kitchen, uh, but you still have to ring in the buffet. You're never going to remember that you forgot. And if a manager's auditing and they see that, you know, four people have been there at the table for 25 minutes and they've been eating buffet, but there's no, they're not rung in. Um, it's really not going to be good enough to say, well, I was going to do it before they left. You just got to ring it in just like you would a normal uh, menu item and all will be well. Um, so buffet line, that's self-service. They grab a fresh plate every single time, which means that on Sundays we're filling coffees, refilling beverages, refilling Bloody Marys, uh, uh, maintaining the table by pre-bussing all the soiled dishes. If we do happen to take away their soiled uh, silverware as well, we just need to make sure that we bring them another set because they might be going back up to the line to grab a fresh plate. Um, so it's just a lot of maintenance, uh, but it's very it, it's fast because obviously people can eat right away. Um, and just important that we get their stuff off of their table just like we would in any other visit uh, when they're through with it, whether that be napkins, silverware, uh, uh, used plates, anything that's soiled needs to be removed from the from the table. So that's a popular day. Get familiar with that. Caramel rolls and BYO omelets are serviced out of the kitchen. Again, out of the kitchen. Um, they come with the buffet uh, and they're available only to the buffet people. Uh, if somebody wanted to come in and just order an omelet and not order the buffet, talk to a manager. I'm sure that they'll uh, find a way to accommodate the guests and come up with the appropriate charge for it. Uh, but if they're having the buffet, it comes with every uh, thing except for beverages. So here's the final picture. You'll see in the back right is the caramel roll set. They have a plate with biscuits and gravy. There looks like there's an omelet uh, in the center there above the main plate. And then they've got quite a bit of stuff on the main plate. So Sunday is very popular. We do not offer our buffet to go uh, and or box leftovers, and that's for obvious reasons. I don't think I've heard somebody ask that in the last three years, but it must be stated in the event it does come up because we're not going to have somebody eating four plates, then going back for a fifth time and then saying, can I get boxes? Nobody really does that. It's a little tacky, but just so you know, we do not uh, do our buffet uh, to go or box leftovers uh, for brunch. That concludes part three. Take the quiz. Do very well. Come back for part four. You're almost there. Thanks for your time. Appreciate it.